So you may have noticed something odd about America's Nature magazines. Three of the most prestigious scientific journals have condemned Trump's handling of COVID-19. One of these is Nature magazine, the world's premier science journal. I wanted to read the Nature magazine editorial in support of Joe Biden. We don't really learn that much about Joe Biden from the editorial. The editorial is one long complaint about President Donald Trump. It's almost as if Nature magazine went to Joe Biden's presidential campaign and said, can you give us a summary of how Donald Trump is anti-science and irrational? Joe Biden must be given an opportunity to heal a divided nation and begin the urgent task of rebuilding the United States reputation in the world. Now, these two statements aren't even in the editorial. They're just in the photo caption. Nature magazine makes a number of conceptual flaws in their endorsement of Joe Biden. One of them is to confuse areas where you can have genuine disagreement with hard scientific fact. If Nature magazine tells us that Joe Biden must be given an opportunity to heal a divided nation, as they do here in this caption, that is a very arguable premise. Joe Biden had eight years as President Obama's vice president and he did not heal a divided nation. Take a look at this quote from the president back in 2008. This was when he was on the campaign trail, everybody. He says, quote, they're going to try to scare people. They're going to try to say that that Obama is a scary guy. If they bring a knife to the fight, we bring a gun. President Barack Obama brought Chicago-style politics to a national level and divided our country to such an extent that Donald Trump's election was possible. If Nature magazine wished to argue with me the precise formula for Hawking radiation that is emitted from the polar regions of a black hole, I would cede to Nature magazine that they know more about the emission of Hawking radiation from black holes than I do. Nature magazine does not know anything more about politics than I do. Why must Joe Biden be given an opportunity to heal a divided nation? Why is it that Joe Biden needs to begin the urgent task of rebuilding the United States reputation in the world? The whole premise of President Trump's campaign and his presidency is that he reversed the policies of Obama-Biden, that he enacted new trade agreements with our trade partners and found fairer deals for America's farmers and to bring factories back from places like China and the rest of Asia. Donald Trump also put notice on our foes that the weak response to Iran's nuclear ambitions would not proceed unchecked under President Trump. If you're going to talk about science, that's fine. If you're going to talk about arguable points of perspective, Nature Magazine does not have a monopoly on the truth. They don't have a monopoly on political viewpoints or perspectives. On 9 November 2016, the world awoke to an unexpected result. Donald Trump had been elected president of the United States. This journal did not hide its disappointment, but, Nature observed, U.S. democracy was designed with safeguards intended to protect against excesses. It is founded on a system of checks and balances that make it difficult for a president to exercise absolute power. Now, this phrase here, this was an accusation from the 2016 campaign. As we've seen, President Donald Trump has not exercised absolute power. Their complaint is baseless, and it has not been borne out by President Trump's first term. But Nature Magazine does not have a monopoly on the truth or facts. This is something that is readily debatable. Most of their points proceed along this way. We were hopeful that this would help to curb the damage that might result from Trump's disregard for evidence and the truth, disrespect for those he disagrees with, and toxic attitude towards women.
how wrong we turned out to be. Well, finally some honesty from Nature magazine. They were completely wrong about President Trump. No U.S. president in recent history has so relentlessly attacked and undermined so many valuable institutions, from science agencies to the media, the courts, the Department of Justice, and even the electoral system. Republican members of the Electoral College, this message is for you. As you know, our founding fathers built the Electoral College to safeguard the American people from the dangers of a demagogue. What is evident is that Donald Trump lacks more than the qualifications to be president. He lacks the necessary stability. And clearly the respect for the constitution of our great nation. Trump claims to put America first, but in his response to the pandemic, Trump has put himself first not America. His administration has picked fights with the country's long-standing friends and allies and walked away from crucial international scientific and environmental agreements and organizations, notably the 2015 Paris Climate Accord, the Iran nuclear deal, the United Nations Science and Education Agency, UNESCO, wow we've heard about UNESCO and Oxfam haven't we, and even unthinkable in the middle of a pandemic the World Health Organization. Uh, now this last one, of course, there's numerous articles detailing how the World Health Organization barred any health information coming from the nation of Taiwan because that would have offended the Chinese government. And in fact, if we look through this editorial, there is not one word uh, about China, the Wuhan flu, or the origin of the pandemic in communist-controlled China. Why is this? Well, Nature Magazine maintains a chief core office in Shanghai, China. And if you criticize the Chinese communist government in any way, they'll close your businesses operating in mainland China. So we have here a conflict of interest between truth-telling by Nature Magazine and them maintaining their principal office in Shanghai, China. They don't point this out, but I will. Challenges such as ending the COVID-19 pandemic, tackling global warming, and halting the proliferation and threat of nuclear weapons are global and urgent. They will not be overcome without the collective efforts of the nation states and international institutions that the Trump administration has sought to undermine. It is clearly an opinion if you decide that a Democrat president will handle these specific issues better than a Republican president. Nature Magazine's staff probably has this view about President Ronald Reagan and both President Bush's. And if John McCain or Mitt Romney had become president, they would be writing editorials about them in the same manner. So it is a lie by Nature Magazine's editorial staff to pretend that Donald Trump represents some unique threat to the world order. On the domestic front, one of this administration's most dangerous legacies will be its shameful record of interference in health and science agencies, thus undermining public trust in the very institutions that are essential to keeping people safe. And you can go back and see the same criticisms about President Ronald Reagan, about President George H.W. Bush, 41, and George W. Bush, 43. And there's nothing unique about this nature editorial. It's the same old thing from people that you would never expect to have a different opinion about politicians who do not share their precise ideology. And this is about ideology, not science. Previous Republican presidents have also ascribed to a bipartisan tradition of supporting funding for science and innovation. But Trump has sought to remake the Republican Party according to his own populist values. Populists from all points on the political compass are on the rise around the world. They divide the world into people and elites. The latter, according to populists, include researchers and the institutions where they work. The Trump administration has undermined trust in their knowledge, interfered with their autonomy, and expressed disdain for the essential role they have in national life. Supreme Court justices, civil service professionals, and journalists have been similarly attacked. So, if Donald Trump ever defends himself against 
deep state employees of the federal government attempting to undermine his foreign policy. He's a bad person. If Donald Trump ever defends himself against journalists making unfair accusations, it's Trump's fault. Coronavirus catastrophe. The Trump administration's disregard for rules, government, science, institutions of democracy, and, ultimately, facts, and the truth, have been on full display in its disastrous response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, folks, you don't need to be a scientist to know that this precise sentence could have been voiced by any member of Joe Biden's political campaign. In the pandemic's earliest days, Trump chose not to craft a comprehensive national strategy to increase testing and contact tracing. Again, contact tracing is a debatable political choice which involves monitoring and spying on a nation's citizens in every aspect of their life. Democrats have expressed a desire to know what every American citizen is doing, thinking, in their lives. That's what contact tracing is. That's antithetical to our nation's traditions of freedom. Instead, he flouted and publicly derided the science-based health guidelines set by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, for the use of face masks and social distancing. Well, we have early comments at the start of this year from Dr. Fauci and others dismissing whether face masks would be needed, dismissing whether social distancing would be needed. Because at this time, at the start of 2020, no one knew what the best policy for combating coronavirus and COVID-19 would be. The fact that Dr. Fauci, the head of the CDC, has changed his recommendations over the months is not grounds for criticism for him. By the same token, President Trump's evolving policy on the coronavirus response since the start of the year is also something that you cannot attack simply for an evolution to a response. President Trump conducted daily briefings with the CDC. So how is it that Trump is flouting the CDC if he conducted daily briefings with them? The answer is, a personal interpretation is not based on science. The administration later rewrote guidelines when the message did not align with its agenda. So, when Joe Biden changed his statements and positions on coronavirus response, we don't see a word of that in Nature magazine. Joe Biden repeatedly updated and revised his campaign's official position on coronavirus. You don't see that in this editorial. That's a lie by omission by the Nature magazine staff. Trump has lied about the dangers posed by the virus. Again, that's opinion. That is not science. That is not fact-based. You are making an arguable, partisan point, Nature magazine. Posed by the virus and has encouraged people to protest against policies intended to slow its transmission. So, protesting a lockdown in your state has been reported in the most evil terms by the mainstream media. But protests involving Democrat protesters looting, burning, tearing down statues, and conducting violent mayhem, we don't see a word of that in the Nature Magazine editorial. Why is it that Nature Magazine doesn't tell us that Joe Biden encouraged and dismissed such violent protests by the militant left of the Democratic Party, because Nature Magazine is sculpting a narrative here by omitting facts. The result, if not the goal, has been to downplay the greatest crisis the country and the world has faced in at least half a century. Notice there's no complaints here about how the European Union has bungled their response to coronavirus. Somehow, Trump flew across the Atlantic Ocean and caused increased fatalities in Europe. I'd like Nature Magazine to explain how Trump caused the bungled policies of the European Union. Maybe another editorial. These actions have had devastating consequences. With the nation's death toll now exceeding 215,000, the coronavirus has killed more people in the United States than anywhere else. Well, that itself right there is still an arguable political debating term. If a country has more testing than another country, and the country with more testing reports more people that have died had coronavirus in their system, 
did you prove that the country with more testing has more has killed more people you have not and the every single person working at nature magazine knows the fallacy of this argument trump failed catastrophically when it mattered most now our country is currently operating under stimulus packages proposed by nancy pelosi the speaker of the house of representatives passed by the u.s senate and signed by president trump trillions of dollars have been spent since the outbreak on these various stimulus package responses. Also, great vast sums of money have been spent on mobilizing hospital ships uh, and of working with uh, drug companies to develop a vaccine. These are all arguable points during a political campaign. Nature magazine pretends that since they have a sole monopoly on the facts, therefore only their perspective is valid. I would submit that this is not a scientific attitude. This undermining of research advice has been accompanied by the systematic dismantling of scientific capacity in regulatory science agencies. Now, this is something that you could actually have a good discussion on, because when a Republican president runs the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, this complaint comes up every time. Likewise, the CDC, which should have led the coronavirus response, was quickly made subordinate to a task force whose leaders include Vice President Mike Pence and Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner. Uh, Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner. Hmm, he's been signing peace deals all over the world, bringing peace to the world on a level that would award any other president the Nobel Peace Prize. Why does Jared Kushner receive no credit for signing peace deals? Oh, that's right. It does not advance the political slant of Nature Magazine's editorial. No president in recent history has tried to politicize government agencies and purge them of scientific expertise. Okay, never mind. This is what I already said about the EPA. The Trump administration's actions are accelerating climate change, raising wilderness, fouling air, and killing more wildlife, as well as people. Now, we can actually return to the first presidential debate between Biden and Trump. Near the end of that debate, they had a good exchange about California's wildfires. President Trump stated the facts that every year, the Democrat politicians on the West Coast come to him and beg for help combating wildfires. President Trump has always gone back to them and said, why do you not permit forestry management? It's been the case for decades that California environmental groups have gone to court to block forestry management. Forestry management is where you go into these uh, wilderness areas, you create fire breaks, you carve cuts between sections of the forest, and you remove brush and deadwood so that fires do not rage across, out of control across hundreds of thousands of acres. California's environmental groups, working with California's Democrats, have caused this very problem because they block forestry management. President Trump rightly raised the science. The science and the facts were on President Trump's side. But you saw no coverage of this exchange by the American news media or by Nature magazine because it does not serve their political agenda. Trump has also promoted nationalism, isolationism, and xenophobia. Wow, that was Biden's actual false charge when Trump blocked travel from China, stating that Trump was using xenophobia. Turns out Joe Biden was wrong, and he corrected himself several months later. But Trump's initial response to the coronavirus was correct. Trump relied on the science to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Trump's critics came up with their usual routine of saying Trump was racist against Chinese people. Downplaying it, being overly dismissive, or spreading misinformation is only going to hurt us and further advantage the spread of the disease. But neither should we panic or fall back on xenophobia. Labeling COVID-19 a foreign virus does not displace accountability for the misjudgments that have been taken thus far by the Trump administration. Banning all travel from Europe or any other part of the world may slow it, but as we've seen, it will not stop it. And travel restrictions based on favoritism and politics rather than risk 
will be counterproductive. This is going to require a national, a national response. It's going to mean making some radical changes in our personal behaviors. More frequent and more thorough hand washing, staying home from work if you're ill, but also altering the deeply ingrained habits in our country like handshakes and hugs, avoiding large public gatherings. That's why earlier this week, on the recommendation of officials, my campaign canceled election night rallies. Notice that the Biden campaign will simultaneously claim Trump is too close to China's leader, Xi, and then also claim Trump is racist towards Chinese people, including tacitly supporting white supremacist groups. Now, the great thing about YouTube is that you yourself can go and watch President Trump's complete remarks in public on YouTube, unedited by CNN or Nature magazine. You will see, for his entire presidency, Donald Trump has denounced white supremacists, Donald Trump has denounced the KKK, Donald Trump has denounced white nationalism, Donald Trump has denounced white supremacy, and neo-Nazis. It's on tape. It's there for anyone to see. I've made another video about that. Um, you can go look for Trump's remarks after Charlottesville. And you had some very bad people in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. Well, no, George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now, are we going to take down his statue? So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. Don't let the American news media edit the reality for you. Don't let them lie to you. Donald Trump does not tacitly support white supremacist groups. That is a political claim by partisan Democrats. That is not a scientifically based claim. The administration has rewritten immigration policies beginning in 2017 with a controversial travel ban on people from seven countries. See, this is what I mean. They've got complaints going back to the first year of President Trump's presidency. Now in the age of coronavirus, restricting travel between countries becomes even more pressing. Trump's efforts to close borders, limit immigration, and discourage international scientific cooperation, especially from researchers, especially with researchers from China. Uh, Nature Magazine, have you expressed any concern for the, the Chinese scientist employed at the Wuhan Virology Institute? You know, the scientists that were working on the novel coronavirus at the time that it either accidentally escaped from their laboratory or was deliberately released. We still don't know the answers to that because the Chinese Communist government has no freedom of press or freedom of speech. Whatever information comes out of China is still determined by the Chinese Communist Party. These scientists that were publishing papers and doing online discussions in China at the time of the coronavirus outbreak, they've all disappeared. Their Web pages were cleansed from the various universities and institutions that they worked at. They were edited off of the online community by the Chinese government. Why has Nature magazine shown zero concern for the whereabouts or safety of numerous scientists that were working on the coronavirus? Oh, because Nature magazine wants to preserve their principal office in Shanghai, which is exactly why the World Health Organization lied about the Chinese government's response to the coronavirus because they were in financial ties 
to the Chinese Communist Party. Nature Magazine is not giving us the truth about what happened in China. Why do they not care about the Chinese scientists in China that have been disappeared by their own government? I would like to know the answer to that, and so would Nature Magazine readers. Biden must lead. Trump has not grown into his position as president and has demonstrated that he can neither lead nor unite the United States. Joe Biden, by contrast, has a history in the Senate as a politician who has reached across to his political opponents and worked with them to achieve bipartisan support for legislation. So uh, why wasn't Joe Biden working with Republicans to design Obamacare? The Affordable Care Act passed without one Republican vote. President Obama's attitude, as stated in remarks to Senator John McCain, was, we won, and he pushed back on Senator McCain's request to help participate in writing the law of the Affordable Care Act. So we don't have evidence of a factual nature from Joe Biden's eight years in the Obama administration that what Nature Magazine claims here is true. This is a partisan claim by partisan Democrats working at Nature Magazine. This is not science-based, and this is not fact-based. Now, this is my favorite part of the whole editorial, and this is one of the reasons I wanted to make this video. A skill that will be needed now more than at any time in the recent past, because he will inherit a nation that is even more divided than it was four years ago. <laughs> Nature Magazine, why was America divided four years ago? Because the policies of President Barack Obama and Joe Biden artificially polarized this nation. President Obama divided America into groups of victims, all at each other's throats, for benefits from the federal government. This was the usual routine for how government functioned in the city of Chicago. President Obama was a product of the Chicago political machine, a city that hadn't seen Republican leadership in over 50 years. The Chicago premise to government was that they were the only political party and that compromise was never needed because Republicans were this strange group of yokels far away from Chicago whom President Obama, as a senator, never really had to work for, with or for. That is the attitude of the Obama White House. President Obama so polarized and divided this nation into angry groups of voters that the rise of a real estate magnet was possible. There is no way Donald Trump, Pizza Hut spokesman. It's wrong, isn't it? But it feels so right. Then it's a deal? Yes, we eat our pizza the wrong way. Crust first. Introducing crust first. first. May I have the last slice? Actually, you're only entitled to half. And reality show host could have ever become president if President Obama and Joe Biden had not worked every day for eight years to divide this nation against itself. There would be no Trump without Obama. And the proof is right here in Nature Magazine's own editorial. How on earth was America divided four years ago? That was after eight years of enlightened leadership and rule by Joe Biden and Barack Obama. Right here, they contradicted themselves and they destroyed the entire premise of their biased partisan editorial. Nature Magazine, you yourself said America was divided four years ago. Why was it divided? So that Democrats could increase their political power at the expense of the unity every American enjoyed prior to President Obama's divisive administration. For these reasons, Nature is endorsing Biden and urging voters to cast a ballot for him on November 3rd. It might help the editors of Nature magazine to review what the scientific method is. Let's read this by Rational Wiki and see if this bears any resemblance to the editorial published by Nature magazine in favor of Joe Biden. Step 1. Observe. Look at the world and find a result that seems curious. Step 2. Hypothesize. Come up with a possible explanation. Step 3. Predict. The most important part of a hypothesis or theory is its ability to make predictions that have yet to be observed. A hypothesis that makes no new predictions is scientifically worthless. Predictions must be falsifiable. Theoretically, new evidence can show the prediction to be false. 
4. Test predictions. Compare the predictions with new empirical evidence, often supported by mathematics. This step is the reason why a hypothesis or theory has to be falsifiable. If there's nothing to falsify, then the experiment is pointless because it's guaranteed to tell you nothing new. Information from the experiment can disprove the original hypothesis, which might be refined into a better one. Finally, step five, reproduce. Ensure the result is a true reflection of reality by verifying it with others. Well, Nature Magazine and your editors, I am one of those others, and I can tell you that your editorial is not fact-based and it's not science-based. It is simply the talking points from a political campaign Maybe the rest of the time, you are impartial scientists, but in this editorial, you are agents of the Joe Biden presidential campaign, and you do not have facts or the science on your side. Thank you.